Hi, I'm Neil Hunt. I'm the Digital Content Lead for Cable Congress, and I'm here with Barry Couples, who is the Chief Executive of International Investment for Omnicom. Indeed. Barry, thanks for joining us. You're welcome, Neil. Um, firstly, can you tell me a little bit about what, what you do and, and your relationship with the, with the cable industry? Uh, obviously, we have a very strong relationship with the cable industry, certainly through the role that I'm deployed in. Um, I'm in the investment team, uh, and we have a number of investment teams all over the world, both regionally and locally, every single market that we're in. Uh, and our job really is to ensure that we're delivering value for our clients, uh, we're delivering and that's being measured and delivered, and just to make sure basically that uh, the, what's said was being delivered is actually being delivered. So a lot of relationships with all the vendors in the world and keeping pace with the changes, technology and otherwise. Um, you mentioned the changes obviously in the kind of TV industry at the moment, you, you know, you kind of, the rise of Netflix and the, the kind of cord cutting generation that, that, that um, apparently are, are changing <laughs> the face of everything. Is that a trend that, that, that you see in the European scene? Trends, it's a wonderful word isn't it, can be used to really mislead people or to really drive something. I think what's important for us, uh, talking about cable, it's a great trend because we've really passed some really fundamental thresholds and passed them a while ago. Now, technology is ubiquitous, we all know that, uh, and the reality is the target audiences that drive the advertising dollars that you asked me about to open, you know, the, the adoption's almost at 100%, so it's not just the, the, the millennial audience, which we all obsess about, it's the 25-34 audience, which is a huge audience for advertisers, the 35-44 audience, and even the older part, adoption's really, really strong. So yeah, the trend is a really good one, uh, and you mentioned Netflix, I just wanted to share. You know, we talk about trends and is it scaling? I mean, it's scaled. It's already scaled, but it's never unilateral. It's never uniform around the world. Uh, just a quick number from the US. I think recently I saw that it was 37% of peak time bandwidth in North America is actually taken by Netflix, which is really interesting when you think about the commercial reality of that. Uh, because it means that the cable companies are really focusing more on broadcast channels they, than they are on IP infrastructure, which is really interesting. The, pa the pace of the world doesn't happen at the same time. The change is different uh, at different uh, stages. So China, video post the child of the world for several years now. Uh, the US, it's really strong. Australia's really strong. Japan's really strong. UK and Germany are really strong. The others are catching up. Not catching up miles away, catching up quickly. So yes, that trend's particularly good. Video is being served out uh, on a massive demand, on surface on demand at a mass scale at the moment. So you're seeing a polarisation, if you like, of demographic behaviour. And then I guess how, you know, with, with um, traditional, certainly on the TV side of cable operation, how do they adapt to this kind of new world of, you know, there's so much content out there, there's so, much, so many channels being delivered now. That's a great question. It's different by country. Remember, the, the key one for us, or maybe not, but the key one for me at the moment is OTT. And OTT is playing slightly to different rules because it's not fixated with what we'll say are the ratings deliveries because it's all about the consumer experience because it's a paid for. So the answer somewhere in there, which is actually tied up in one of your other questions, which is in how do they adapt. But I think one of these trends that uh, often gets missed because people talk about scale and what's happening, just think for a second that the, the tech companies uh, are taking all of the lakes of data that have been out there. We've been hearing big data for several years now, uh, not been able to use it, so it's relatively small data. But now the lakes are really being aggregated and utilised. There's trillions of decisions going on daily. Trillions. And the important part for the industry, the cable industry, the OTT industry, and what entertainment's going to become, they're already being planned on a dressable basis and they're being bought programmatically. Now that isn't going to change. So the industry is in a wonderful place because of that and it's just going to increase. And then I suppose looking at that, that kind of, you know, we've obviously seen, this, especially in Europe, a lot of kind of mergers and acquisitions and, and takeovers. Is that, is that something we're likely to continue to see? Do you know what? I'm not entirely certain of what the merger landscape uh, will be going forward, but what we've seen to date is that production and delivery are coming much closer together. You've got to remember it's a connected world for everybody, so that's just a natural consequence. Of course they're going to come together. Um, what I'd like to see moving forward, a bundling of content, uh, channels, I, I don't really want to see that. I'd like us to see bundling of what I'll call intelligent, um, intelligent uh, programming entertainment around a secure data profiling, everything that's transparent, 
to be able to drive things forward in that way. That's what I'd really like to see through the mergers. But um, I'm really encouraged by what's gone on. There's, not, there's been nothing that I haven't uh, thought of as being extremely useful. Um, and it's been a, a, you know, a, a landscape of, of, you know, of drive and, and things that are genuinely dynamic. And that's great. And I want that to continue. It's just I'm struggling a little bit to see where the next huge one will come from. Um, but it's definitely going to happen. Yeah, it's definitely yeah. going to happen. Now you mentioned you mentioned data a, a little bit there, and, and kind of looking forward, you know, obviously, you know, traditionally and historically, the data has been owned by, uh, often by the, by the people who own the box, um, and not necessarily the content provider. So there's there's been a kind of a mismatch there. Is it, a you know looking forward, kind of five, ten, fifteen years, is that a, a possible direction for for cable companies to, to move to, owning more of the kind of analytics and, da and data set as well as the, the content delivery and the means of delivery? Uh, yeah, great question. Great question. Um, it's a personal view. Uh, I'm not sure that everybody out there holds the same, same view. The first thing to, to centre that, to anchor it, is that um, it needs to be really transparent. Data needs to be uh, bought into by everybody. The exchange through the API needs to be very, very transparent because at some point in the, in the near future, the currencies and metrics of success that we all work to uh, will change. They're changing now, but not dramatically. Uh, data will allow us uh, all the way down to potentially transactional data. So the influence to purchase becomes, we know purchase intent is real, and we know what they purchased and when. When we're at that level, who holds those boxes personally? So long as I have an API in to be able to read that data, I don't particularly care on behalf of our clients. I just need to know that our clients have access to it so that they can aggregate against their own data management platform and that we're driving outputs which are based on uh, consumer uh, interaction, convergence and, and just driving the value for clients. That, that's what we're about, client first driving value. So where do you see this kind of going in kind of five or ten years? You know, we often, uh, you know, there are, there are pools of data all the time from IHS and Avon and other research houses like that. You know, what, where, do you see, where do you see the market going? Uh, gosh, great question again. Uh, truly, if you know either of us had the answer to that, uh, <laughs> the reality is I'm sure one of us would write a book or certainly place bets for our kids and indeed their kids so that uh, they do be doing very well in the next uh, 20, 30, 40 years. I think the truth is over the next five years, um, I'd see a massive play from the OTT and platform boys, they'll lead. Um, I think the truth is we'll see parity between the costs of IP and broadcasts. I think that's really important when you look at major shows. I'm not suggesting for a moment that uh, the traditional home of major broadcast events that are global, like a Super Bowl uh, or a, a, an Olympics or a World Cup is going to change, but genuinely, because those things will reach parity, I do believe that the rest is all up for question and it will move to the Googles, Netflix and Amazon. So five years for me, uh, controversial as it may be for some, I genuinely see leadership uh, of the platforms and OTT. I think it will just be very strong. Ten years, um, we're caught up at the moment in VR and AI and uh, higher definition everything. I think the one that will come out, I think uh, virtual reality will move from being you know, the word interesting says everything and nothing. It will move out of the interesting phase into a really creative and dynamic phase. And I think uh, VR and formats that will genuinely be immersive for the consumer. So immersive experience from an immersive format. So v in 10 years, VR and immersive formats will be dominant. And what, about, what about the business model around that? I mean, at the moment, obviously, you're, you work on the, on the advertising side, so you take that to still be strong and it, it being data-based. But, you know, you're weighing, weighing up subscription versus advertising. The kind of Netflixes are a lot more on the, on the side of subscription, yeah. but they are looking at advertising. How do you see that mix? Is it still going to be a, a comfortable mix there? Yeah, remember, they are marriages of convenience in many ways, and uh, we are talking about evolution. I do see them being sorted out. I do see the advertising model uh, becoming just as prolific as it is today. In what format that's going to come, there's still some work to do within that. But uh, as we look to 15 years, you know, remember, just to anchor again some of this stuff, Let's go back 15 years before we talk what the model will be in 15 years. 15 years ago, we didn't have Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and I think Netflix was actually a DVD company. So you've got to remember that evolution over 15 years has been dramatic. So expect the unexpected. There'll be loads of new things out there. 
at the centre of that, that answer is the business model is going to have to be driven by transparent data and we're going to have currencies and metrics for success that look very different from today. Because today's advertising model is driven by something which we genuinely hope in 15 years has disappeared. I'd like to see it disappear quicker than that, which is the same for less. And advertising at the moment is driven by uh, the reality of there's lots of tenders, as I'm sure you know out there in the world of advertising and media agencies. And they tend to be templated, and they're templated on price. So we're talking about a model that won't be templated on price. It'll be templated on experience, data, serving things that people are asking for. And in 15 years' time, things will be very science, if you're sci-fi based. I actually think that people will be demanding their content that serves to them. They may be directing the end. It may be bespoke endings. It may be that personal. So I think the currencies and metrics will be very different to today. I think the business models will change dramatically, thankfully for us in the right way, because we think effectiveness through a business model which isn't focused on buying 100 for less than 100, that's not real value in our belief. And I think the way the industry is going is opening up this new domain of, um, of value through currencies and metrics which are much more valuable to clients, much more valuable. Brilliant. Barry, thanks for your time today. No, thank you. Thank, thank you. you.